Hello and welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today's video I am beyond excited about. You know I've got this series on my channel where I recreate foods from books, movies, and TV shows and it's hands down my favorite thing to do on here. Well, recently I realized that there's a whole nother realm of pop culture yet to be explored and that will be music. One of you guys sent me a DM about a month or two ago that sparked this idea and I didn't take a screenshot, sadly, so I'm sorry about that, but you know who you are. Let's start this off with the one and only Mr. Harry Styles. That man has a bunch of fruit references in his songs. Kiwi, cherry, strawberries. I mean, we all know he's not really singing about fruit, but still, it's enough for me to think of recipe ideas from it. Watermelon sugar just makes me think of something fresh, light, juicy, nothing that's dense or baked. So my initial idea was to try and make one of those watermelon cakes that was really popular on Pinterest a couple years ago, but I wanted to give it a green layer of frosting as well, so if you cut a piece, you'd get the full watermelon effect. Putting this recipe together was a journey. I definitely have a bit of a love-hate relationship with this dessert. First, I made the frosting, which was just plain old vegan whipped cream that I colored with lots of food coloring. I, I mostly used green, but also a tiny bit of yellow to get rid of that strong blueness the green had before. We've got a watermelon here for reference. This is the same color, clearly. And to give it some flavor, I also added some maple syrup, vanilla, and a pinch of salt. I cut off the top and bottom end first, so the melon would stand firmly on my cutting board. Then I cut away the outer layer with a sharp knife, just following the rind. Now using a paper towel, I patted the melon dry as well as the surface underneath it. And then I covered everything with the green frosting. 12 seconds in and it was already clear that this was going to be a huge mess. I have no idea how I managed to make this look actually decent in the end. I topped the quote unquote cake off with and a bit of baking glitter. Now let's all just appreciate the beauty that is this cake before things go south. I don't think I'd recommend this to anyone who's intending to actually serve this to people or to eat it in a graceful way. All right, then I thought I had the solution to all my problems. Instead of doing the whole melon, I went ahead and cut out tiny little watermelon cakes. So first I cut this small to medium sized melon into about five centimeter thick slices. And then using a glass jar and a knife, I cut out round shapes. I patted both the melon dry and um, the cutting board again before covering it with some of the cream. That worked out fine. It was still a bit messy though, um, but overall much easier than my first try. I'm still not 100% convinced by this though, and I really wanted to give you guys a foolproof watermelon sugar recipe. So here's another one. It's this tasty melon and strawberry drink. Make sure you de-seed your watermelon before you add it to the blender, then add some, some lime juice some frozen strawberries, some ice, bit of edible glitter if you have that. And if you want, you could also do like a shot of some type of liquor that you think fits. All right, let's move on to this next song, Honey Pie by Johnny. Honey pie, honey, honey. I'm certain you've heard of it. It went viral on TikTok a while ago and has almost 120 million streams on Spotify right now. I love Johnny's music. It's just so fun and catchy. I highly encourage you, if you haven't already, to listen to You Got A Man, Trigger Of Love, Sabotage, and Super Bad Mantra. I've always wondered what honey pie actually tastes like. Step number one, prepare the, pri pre <laughs> prepare the pie crust. You can either mix it together with your hands, that works just fine, but using a food processor makes it so much easier. Pie crust essentially is just made up of butter and flour, and it's important to keep everything as cold as possible. I even placed the blender and blade into the fridge for a few hours um, prior to baking, but that's not essential. In a small to medium sized bowl, combine the dry ingredients, flour, salt, and sugar. Set this aside and grab some cold vegan butter that's been cut into cubes. Add those to the food processor along with about a third of the flour mixture. We're gonna add this in three stages. Blend for just a few seconds till the flour is loosely incorporated. Then add batch two. Blend or pulse again for a few seconds. 
then add batch 3, plus a tiny bit of cold water, and blend again. Now the mixture should look something like this, and when you pinch it in between your fingers, it should stick together. That's when you know it's ready to be dumped onto your surface. This is where you're quickly gonna form everything into a large ball. Wrap it up in some parchment paper and place it into the fridge for at least one hour. I'd say it tastes best after a day or two in the fridge, but one hour does it as well. Thoroughly grease an 8 or 9 inch baking tin. Make sure you get the top rim as well. And preheat your oven to 180 degrees. Take the dough out of the fridge, cut it in half, and put one of the halves back into the fridge. Wrapped up again in, in parchment paper. On a generously floured surface, roll this out until it's about 5-4 millimeters thick. Thick. Make sure it's neither sticking to your surface or rolling pin. It helps to just cover both with plenty of flour. Roll the dough onto your rolling pin and then roll it over your baking tin. Drag it into place if needed. I was living on a couch. Gently press the dough into the pan yeah, and cut off any excess that's hanging over the sides. But it's louder than you know. It's like murder she wrote. The parts that weren't covered, I just filled them with some of the, the that leftover dough. If you don't want to roll this out, um, or you're having trouble with it, you could simply just press the dough into the pan, like I did in my cheesecake video. Now we're going to pre-bake this cake base. Carefully place a sheet of parchment paper or aluminum foil over the cake and add your pie weights making sure that the walls you've just created are still standing upright. I went for an oven-proof plate that was slightly smaller than my cake pan. It's better to go for something like dried beans, dried rice, pasta, but yeah, the plate worked okay. Bake this contraption for about 15 minutes. Meanwhile, get started on the filling. In a small bowl, thoroughly combine some cornstarch with non-dairy milk or water. Set that aside. Grab a small saucepan and add all the other ingredients for the filling. Some non-dairy milk or non-dairy cream, coconut sugar, a couple tablespoons of vegan honey, it's made from dandelion, substitute it for date syrup or maple syrup, add some salt, vanilla. Once the honey has been fully incorporated, pour in the cornstarch water solution and bring the heat up to medium high. Mix continuously. Once it comes up to a boil, turn the heat to medium and let it simmer for two to three minutes, stirring basically the entire time until you're left with this dark, caramelly pudding. Now this is what my pre-baked pie looked like. Any sort of imperfections on the sides, like if there's any holes, you can cover those by adding a small piece of dough from the fridge. Now add your filling, smooth out the top, and set that aside while you roll out the top layer. Same as before, on a floured surface, the shape should again be slightly larger than the cake itself, so you can roll it out on top. Fix any holes or cracks with some more dough, Remove whatever is left hanging over the edges. Or you can use the other dough to just make little crumbles out of it and crumble the crumbles on top of your filling. Crimp the edges together with a fork. Bake this for another 28 to 33 minutes or until it's nice and golden brown and then you can pretty much serve this immediately. Feel free to add some of these edible letters that you spent hours on the day before. I know they still look like a child made them, but I'm proud of them. I made them out of buttercream play-doh, same way I made Aang's arrows in the uh, in my avatar the last airbender video link to that will be down below as well i use food coloring to color parts of it blue green orange and purple then i carefully cut out the letters you have to be super gentle here this was tedious for sure but after a while i got really into it it got super dark all of a sudden outside it was storming like crazy yeah B belinda's had some weird days of weather lately don't move the letters once you've cut them out just let them sit there for about 30 minutes and then once they've hardened you can transfer them to the fridge um, to put on your cake the next day i would highly recommend you to try this cake it tastes a lot like i don't know caramel pie caramel pie if that is a thing you can you can skip the letters let's move on to song number three deja vu by olivia rodrigo 
I can't wait for album. I love this song. Strawberry ice cream is being mentioned multiple times, so let's make some. Open up a can of full fat coconut milk that's been sitting in the fridge for 12 to 24 hours. So the cream and the water should be separated. Mine didn't fully separate, but it's totally fine because this actually works super well. Regardless if you use coconut milk or coconut cream, the consistencies will be slightly different, but besides that, it should be same, same. So scoop out the cream as best as you can, place it into the food processor along with some vanilla, salt, liquid sweetener of choice, and some cashew butter. Blend it all up. Then add some fresh or frozen strawberries. Blend again. Scoop the mix into an ice cube tray. One made out of silicon is best. Or if you happen to have little silicon muffin liners or these random little Google Hope cake mold thingies, then use those. I also added some of this to my little red silicon measuring cups. So I just divided the batter evenly between those molds and let them freeze overnight. But even after four to five hours, they should be frozen solid. Next morning, I took these out, put them straight into my food processor and blended these up until I was left with some smooth and light strawberry ice cream. This tastes so, so, so nice. It's so smooth and it doesn't taste much like coconut to me. Actually, I can hardly taste it. I also got some vegan sprinkles to put on top. I could not not include Taylor Swift in this video. I basically just used the two titles, Champagne Problems and Gold Rush, to create a recipe for this golden champagne cake. Preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius and grease up two round eight inch cake tins. Combine all the dry ingredients, flour, salt, baking powder, and sugar. Then in a separate bowl, mix together all the wet ingredients, plain vegan yogurt or vegan curd, vegetable oil, vanilla, apple cider vinegar. Transfer it all to a slightly bigger bowl because you overestimated the first one and add your last ingredient, the champagne. You know, they were all out of Dom Bérignon at the store, so I opted for this three euro Prosecco. Pour this into the dry ingredients, mix it all up until smooth. Divide the batter evenly between the two greased baking tins and bake these guys for 25 to 30 minutes until golden brown. You can check with a toothpick to see if they're done. Let the cakes cool completely before you take them out of the baking tin. And then you're just gonna brush them with lots of Prosecco. If you don't want alcohol in this, boil the champagne for a couple minutes. To a large mixing bowl, add some vegan butter at room temperature, some plant-based cream cheese at room temperature, and some vanilla, doesn't matter the temperature. Mix it for a couple minutes using an electric hand mixer. And then gradually add powdered sugar in two to three stages until you're left with this super light cream that tastes like heaven. Now frost the cakes, once again using your handy cake smoothing device. I actually did two layers total, so I frosted the entire cake, then placed the cake into the fridge for an hour, and then did a second layer, going over anything I've missed the first time around. Now last but not least, sprinkle this with some of the golden baking glitter, or if you happen to have one of those fancy decorating airbrushes, go for that. Carefully sprinkle some of the glitter on there. But yeah, that's it. Dig in, devour, enjoy. And that concludes this little dive into pop music via vegan recipes. I hope you enjoyed it. Definitely let me know in the comments if that's something you want to see more of. Like which artist or song should I cover next if I ever do this again? My friend Julie convinced me to get a TikTok. I caved in finally. <laughs> Feel free to follow me over there and um, leave a comment underneath the post telling me what types of TikToks I should be doing in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time. Bye.